Fam, let's talk about this, okay? Let's talk about Israel, okay? Because a lot of stuff has been going down. We're so concentrating, uh, concentrated, I should say, on everything that's going on here. Mm -hmm. The COVID crisis, will they cancel rent, you know, the protests in the streets, the George Floyd thing that we sometimes, we forget to look at, yeah. at uh, foreign policy, right? And one thing we have to look at right now is Israel, because uh, I think in times of crisis, a lot of the elites become opportunistic people. Yeah. They look to further invade their civil liberties. They look to further take that money, the CARES Act up top. And imperialists like Netanyahu look to go get territory or start uh, what I should say red herring fiascos or mm -hmm. crises that are fugazi. Sorry. So therefore yeah. they can take people off the attention off of him. Remember, there's thousands of people who are protesting right now against the Netanyahu government. So let's get right into this. Do you want to say anything about that before I get going? No, go ahead. All right, so let's talk about Lebanon right here, okay? So Lebanon is in shambles. There's a little video over here. Johnny, can we play this video? I don't think there's any music, but let me know if we not. I, we can kind of talk about it. But this is a great little video. What's going on inside of Lebanon? Lebanon has been hit so hard by the COVID crisis. There's been blackout, suicide. Um, Johnny, play this video because they go inside Lebanon and they give you a little piece about what's going on. Protesters outside Lebanon's state electricity company light candles and curse the darkness. Today, how many hours of electricity have you had today? Uh, four hours. Flowers mark the spot where 61-year-old Ali Mohammed al hek shot and killed himself, apparently in desperation as the Lebanese economy goes into a tailspin. <laughs> My people are hungry, chants this man at a demonstration that gathered after Ali killed himself on Beirut's once fashionable Hamra Street. Others have taken a more violent approach to express their anger at plummeting living standards. What you're seeing right now is not a crisis, it's a collapse. Economist Dima Kreim is following Lebanon's so far fruitless negotiations with the International Monetary Fund for a bailout. In October last year, nationwide protests erupted as Lebanon's banking sector began to fall apart. It was based on what economists have called a Ponzi scheme, whereby Lebanese banks offered sky-high interest rates to mostly Lebanese diaspora depositors and then used those deposits to finance ballooning government deficits. It's a collapse of a whole model. It's a, a collapse of a model that has accumulated losses for three decades. Um, and right now, the majority are bearing the brunt of this collapse, as opposed to the 1% that have made use and have made an infinite amount of uh, uh, um, uh, dollars out of this uh, system. In recent months, prices and unemployment have skyrocketed. The currency, the lira, has lost much of its value. <laughs> All day I've been working and I've only earned 9,000 lira, says this taxi driver. On this day, that was only about one dollar. A year ago, it was six. Butcher Zuhair Takush can't make ends meet. I may close down, he says. There are no sales. Everything, he says, from the plastic bags to the paper he wraps the meat in, has become expensive. Across Beirut, stores have shuttered. No business, no power, no hope. Two days we had more than almost 20 hours of power cuts per day. And that was very brutal on, on us. Keeping the lights on at Beirut's main state hospital is just one thing that keeps director Dr. Firas Abiyad up at night. COVID-19 cases are mounting here while resources evaporate. If the situation gets more difficult and uh, the appearances are at the moment is that it might become more difficult whether we will be able to uh, keep finding solutions. And my answer at this moment is I do not know. For those who have reached rock bottom, the dumpster is the last refuge. In Lebanon, no one has answers anymore. Ben Wiedemann, CNN. Okay, fam. Um, Lebanon is spiraling out of control. Mm -hmm. You know, they've had, uh, like we talked about the situation, a lot of people don't realize some of these countries 
they're just really in bad shape. They've already had mass protests last year, the way the government was running things. Kind of familiar, too, like the 1% of Lebanon, too, stealing the money and everything from the poor people. Once again, they have the same type of problems that we have here, uh, resource and economic extraction, taking away from the poor to give to themselves, causing the country to go in mad economic crisis right now. And it's not even a crisis, it's a collapse. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but once again, when we, when we look in context when it comes to the Lebanese government and the Lebanese military and everything that's there, Hezbollah is very, very present within uh, Lebanon. In fact, Hezbollah twice, by way of guerrilla warfare, once I believe in 2006, I think one it was in 2000, I can't it was 12 or 13, they ran Israel outside of Lebanon, southern Lebanon. You know, we talked about on the show before some of the resources that Lebanon has that Israel doesn't have. And Lebanon has the Latani River. Now, even though a part of the river is very polluted, because we have a lot of big crisis going on over there in Lebanon, and actually, from what I've been told, that there's garbage on the streets piling up, like none of the, none of the extra, like those jobs, like, you know, we talked about the nurses over there that have been fired because, you know, the government can't pay them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just in crisis. And even though they have a dirty river in the Latani River, it's a big source of fresh water. You know, Israel has a bunch of desalination plants, and Zionist maps back in the days would go north of that Latani River. Therefore, they would get part of the river Mm -hmm. for energy, resource, fresh waters that they can clean it up, and then below that would be a buffer zone. So right now we have to look at the situation when everything's going crazy. Will Netanyahu be an opportunist? You know what I'm saying? He's been bombing all in Syria, in Damascus. He's been going after Hezbollah. And now we have rhetoric, rhetoric of Netanyahu claiming that Hezbollah is being aggressive and coming into northern Israel, southern Lebanon. So I want to point this out right now. This is Netanyahu right here because we're going to get further into this, fam, because it turns out... Well, let's play Netanyahu. This is what Netanyahu has to say first. Uh, Johnny, just the beginning of Amid this, you know, soaring Netanyahu tensions between down. Jerusalem and Beirut, an Israeli drone came crashing down Jerusalem and Beirut, an Israeli drone came crashing down to earth in southern Lebanon on Sunday, something the Israeli Defense Force says happened during what they described as operational activities, all in a week in which Israel has been increasing its military presence along the border with Lebanon. Lebanon and Syria are in charge of any attack from Israel. We don't want to destroy our security and we don't want to destroy our citizens. Lebanese state-run media reported that Israeli warplanes were being flown over the south of the country throughout the day. And Israel... They're gonna, they would go into what's going on in Damascus, the way Israel has been bombing Hezbollah militants of sorts. They killed somebody just recently. Mm. So they're kind of using this as an excuse to say that, oh, look, Hezbollah is coming into Israel. They're trying to attack us. They're trying to seek revenge for a militant we got in Syria. We need to go and stop them. But I think you're going to love this article. And there's a couple articles out there, but I stuck with this one, fam, because this one spells Netanyahu's name like N-E-T-A-N-Y-A-H-O-O apostrophe, like he's a Yahoo. Mm-hmm. And he is. And a lot of Israeli, the electorate there of sorts is very like nationalistic, like our electorate. Remember 9-11? Remember George Bush? George Bush got reelected for his 9 uh, 11. I, I don't want to use the word retaliation because he didn't go after the Saudis, he went after Iraq. But people were so just misinformed and un- uneducated, they didn't even know the difference right. between a Sunni and a Shiite. It was the jingoism, like yes. the, the, the patriotism. Yeah. Exactly. And, and George Bush won because of that. Mm-hmm. So let's read this right here. This is the uh, ep- uh, epidemic and Hezbollah add to Netanyahu's problem. Uh, Okay, the Israeli government under President uh, Benjamin Netanyahu faces two crises. Hezbollah, the Lebanese resistant organization, has announced to take revenge for one of its soldiers, Israeli, killed. A botched handling of the COVID-19 epidemic by the government has come under much criticism. Together with the criminal proceedings against Netanyahu, either could lead to his fall. Yesterday, Israel claimed that Hezbollah's soldiers had crossed into the northern border uh, but were pushed back. Israeli forces on Monday exchanged fire with Hezbollah militants along the vital Israeli-Lebanese frontier, and Israeli civ- civilians living in the area 
were ordered to remain indoors amid the heaviest fighting between the, the bitter enemies in nearly a year. So just put to put in pr to perspective, fam, it's been over a year. They say things are heating up. This is a serious cr uh, crisis. When we hear Hezbollah, remember when they asked Tulsi Gabbard that question and they tied Hezbollah into it? It's a very big buzzword. People don't understand what Hezbollah actually is. You know what I'm saying? They just think it's Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. That's the main frame of what's going on. But it's not. Hezbollah is very much involved in the politics of Lebanon. They're very much involved with the Palestinian people mm -hmm. because nobody would help them. Hezbollah stepped up. They're very much involved inside Iran. Are they an enemy of Israel? Are they an enemy of the United States? You can say that. But there are a lot of guerrilla fighters just fighting for what they believe to be, you know, fighting for their land and their people. They're not just terrorists out there making attacks. I'll probably get ridiculed for that. Uh, let's get back to the article because I want to jump down. It says pretty much, it says the fighting accord uh, occurred in an area known as the Cheba Farms, uh, which is an area in uh, no uh, northern Israel that was claimed by Israel, but also Lebanon claimed rights to it. So it's, uh, once again, an area that's under, you know, a suspect of who owns it. Uh, and I want to jump down in this thing here. It says, Hezbollah said the fighters were not involved in any fighting along the border with, uh, with Israel. Okay? It says, uh, the long, nervous guarding border while waiting for Hezbollah hit, must have, he said he must have had involved in some hallucina hallucinations. So can you say that word for me? Hallucinations? Thank you. I can't even say it. There was no Hezbollah there. That's what they're saying. So... In a statement that the clash, uh, the, following the clashes, the group said that all the claims by, made by Israeli media about the infiltration attempt by Hezbollah into Israel are not true at all, and all are attempts to invent elusive victories. So in other words, they're saying that they're just conjuring up this whole story. Israel claims it has footage, but it never released the footage. So what is going on? Is this a Fugazi false attack? Is this something to stir up so that Israel can go in there. What is the end game? And a lot of people feel that Netanyahu, since he's under pressure, since there are a lot of protests against him, mm -hmm. are gonna, is going to cause a false uh, red herring flag, an aggression that doesn't exist. Therefore, it would give him the right of course. to go into Lebanon to maybe take that territory. And I got some drone footage over there, the Latani River. And even though it's kind of polluted in some areas, I think that Israel will love to get a hold of the southern border of Lebanon, take that in control because there will create another buffer zone south of the river into northern Israel. So for them to take that back, I think they're going to try to do that now, fam. Uh, so we have to pay attention. Here's something also to consider. Maybe they're going to do it quickly because Donald Trump has been the most, from what I've heard, I've, I've had friends that are very pro-Israel, pro-Netanyahu, who said that there hasn't been a better president for Israel than Donald Trump. He's moved the embassy to Jerusalem. He's given them what they want. We understand how Pence and Kushner, mm -hmm. really close to Netanyahu. So a lot of people think that he's going to try to act quickly before Trump loses the election. So that's the story I just want to kind of bring to, to, to heart today because uh, it's something we have to pay attention to. And Beirut is in a lot of trouble right now. Lebanon, the government is crashing. So we have to look for these imperialists because people haven't realized how much bombing has been going on, fam. During this whole COVID crisis, Israel has been bombing Damascus, Syria. Now they're trying to cause another problem with Lebanon. Yep. So this is something to pay attention to. And I also have this other article that I kind of slipped in there that it has this kind of nationalist history that uh, Shimon Perez was no peace, peacemaker. And in this article, it talks about, I don't know if it'll let me go there, but it will talk about the city of Ghana. And I can't even say the name right. And it was a uh, it was a city Ghana uh, Q Kana Q A N A, mm -hmm. and it was a city that was a retaliation by the Israeli military that killed hundreds of people, little babies and boys and little children were killed. 106 bodies dead on the ground, and it, and it was supposedly retaliation from Hezbollah firing rockets into Israel. So he did this in, in 1990, and he did it right before an election, fam. Right before an election to try to stir up that nationalistic kind of like, you know, stand by Israel, we're getting attacked. The same thing the United States does. Right. So right. here's what's happening now over there. Netanyahu's under fire. People are protesting. He hasn't handled the COVID right. He needs a, a, another crisis to really take his people's eyes and ears off what's going on as a distraction 
for him to get reelected and stay in power and not be thrown out. Yeah. I mean, they're just copying what we do. <laughs> Basically. I mean, this is we do this all the time. We we stir up conflicts and then we we make them bigger than they are. We blame the other side and then we use that to foment war. Yeah. So that's um, essentially what we do. Johnny, doesn't Israel have like a uh have a plan to expand out even more? Yep. Maybe this could be part of that. Part of that plan. Yep. Part of that plan. I, I, the Greater Zion Alliance or something yeah, it's called some, or something we, we, like that. Yeah. Um I think that was Ken O'Keefe was the guy who kind of put out when we started looking into that, there is a you know a plan for more territory to with, colonize eventually. With Lebanon's economy is collapsing, yes, and that Israel is doing this action on the on the border of that that looks like imperialism, right? I mean, it looks like they're about it to. Looks it looks like the imperialist. Is. It looks like they're going to try and take that and maybe ask for more funds from the United States to do it, right? Yeah. Because they're saying that they're getting attacked, and we're gonna go and put some uh, human rights, right? We're gonna uh, hold our hold our human rights, but let Saudi Arabia run around and let let yeah. Yemen happen, right? Let them chop people's heads off in the streets in front of everybody. Um, and you know, uh, yeah, Johnny, it's a great point to put it. It's it's all about the imperialism. It's all about that plan. But I think we have to look during these times of crisis to see what these governments are doing to us: Israel, the United States, Britain. You know what I'm saying? France. You know, France has been an opportunist in, in, in uh, Africa going after diamond mines. When there's a crisis, here they come. They come in, they overturn stuff. What they did in Libya, right? Here it is, crisis. Let's go on in. This is something really to look at. It's, but the French you know, are protesting that neoliberalism directly, whereas we're not. Yeah. Yeah. We are. So, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, like somebody's saying Dick Medhurst, Richard Medhurst, Dick Medhurst, he talks about this stuff. We got to look at these things. You know what I'm saying? Lebanon is one of those areas, you know, Hezbollah, people don't realize, all right, Hezbollah has beaten back Israel twice, guerrilla warfare style in southern Lebanon and kicked Israel out. That's got to be on their mind. You think right. that it's just, oh, it's, that's why they're terrorists. It, that's why they're terrorists. Because they're they defending the themselves warfare. from the Western Empire. Anybody that defends themselves from America's imperialism is 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 a is a evil dictator is is a terrorist is awful. But really, like when you really look at who's the bully, it's America and their Western allies as yeah. well. You know, well, uh, Friday on the show uh, is today Thursday. Today's Wednesday. Today's on Friday, Wednesday. we're gonna have on Mark Sloboda to talk about what's going on in Ethiopia and Egypt. I fam, I keep talking about this right now. We've gone after most of the oil in the world and we're sucking it dry. So it's got to run out sooner or later, right? So what's the next most, what's the most valuable resource now on the planet? It's water. You look at Israel's territory. It doesn't have a, a ton of fresh water in it. It's got a bunch of desalination plants, but that's the whole thing now. Uh, Israel's enemies, Iran for number one, has the ability to knock out those desalination plants. Lebanon knows about it right now, so it's like they have to make a chance. I think they have to make a press to go up and get part of that river. They're gonna. It's all about water nowadays, nowadays ladies and gentlemen. Whoever controls the water is going to control the world. We need water to live. So, you know, these desalination plants that they've just invested a lot of money in them, you know, the Houthis showed Saudi Arabia like, hey, dude, we'll go deep inside your territory and we'll knock out an oil refinery. Well, they could do the same thing to a water desalination plant, and that's something we have to keep our eye on about who's going to go up and grab what, what territory. You know, this is some hairy times because everybody's concentrating on the crisis. And what do you do right now for Lebanon, right? Okay, Lebanon's in a situation. They can't get a government under control that could really handle what's going on in their country. You know, and the same thing. Their bankers did the same thing that they did to us. They raped the country blind. They took the money. And not to mention, they do have some fundamental problems the way their government is structured, you know? Yeah. Uh, and um, it's just something to keep an eye on, fam. It's something scary. You know, Israel can try to ex expand more of their territory right now. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's, <laughs> it's scary, but we got to keep our eye on the imperialism. So, yeah, yeah. Someone in the comments says that. Max Blumenthal wrote about the, the greater, what is it, greater? Israeli project or something it's called. The greater Israel strategy. Strategy? No, yeah. their strategy is to yeah. pretty and much his, take over the book. entire Middle East and pretty much and everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the time. Right now, everybody, it's COVID crazy. I mean, Lebanon is in serious trouble right now. Their dollar, the lira, you saw, it's it hyperinflation. So their money is no good. Yep. 
You know what I mean? And like I I've, I've been reading certain stuff and I saw things that say inside the Latani River it's just polluted as can be in certain areas. It's disgusting. There's actually goat herders that would take their goats down to the water. They can't do it anymore. There's p- garbage just piling up on the streets. They fired nurses because they can't afford to do it. They are not in crisis. They're in collapse. Yep. So you know the opportunists, the imperialistic opportunistics, they're going to go right on in and try to take that territory. So something to keep an eye on, something to look on. Dick Medhurst does do some good work on that shit. I love him, and that's something to keep an eye on. 